Uh, Guruji, I made you co-host. Okay. Now, I'll try to record. Now, recording is happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, basically what happens is that it's like a movie. Okay. The movie appears. I get an impression. Impressions get recorded. Okay. I like something. I don't like something. Gets recorded. So, now I like something. I don't like something. Again, comes up because of Shakti, energy. So, it's like projection, recording, projection. The energy Shakti does this. Uh, Shakti takes care of the, what is there in the recording. She brings it out. Becomes a projection. And what is the projection? Becomes a impression. Impressions again brought out. It's like a movie. Recording, projection. Recording, projection. All this happened in the presence of consciousness. Chaitanya. So, the Jiva, ego claims I did it. In reality, it's a happening it's a, it's a movie is getting projected and reactions of the jiva is getting recorded. Again, it gets projected. This is a continuous process happening because of Shakti. So, that's why it said Prakriti Kriyamanani Gunai Karmani Sarvasha. Prakriti is nature. Nature is like, for example, a seed is there. Seed has this information, recording of plant. The seed comes up as a tree. Again, and the seed is born. So, this Entire process, process called impression, projection, recording, it goes on in like a movie. Okay. Okay. So yes, you can ask, are you happy? Uh, sir, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, no, you said the, the Prakriti Shakti, you know, Shiva is the consciousness, no? Right. right. Uh, then what is the physical thing? What is the physical? Uh... Shakti, Shakti only appears. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shakti only appears as everything in the world, including the body and the world. Okay. Shiva is just watching the boss. Okay. okay. So, okay. Dr. Vipin, next question to Mamata Prabhu. Yes. <clears throat> My next question, Mamata Ji, is that <clears throat> when Guruji says in waking state, I am in deep sleep. In waking state, I am in deep sleep. What does it mean? Please tell us in the practical terms. Here, uh, you have to understand what he is talking about. When he says waking state, what is what is his what is meaning by waking state and uh, when he says we are dreaming what does it mean you said waking state what, no, can you repeat uh, that question again guruji says that in waking state i am in deep sleep so who is yeah. in deep sleep and who is in waking state and why are these two sentences important for, for our real living and for decision making and generally uh, to be in that realized state? Yeah, waking state here, he is telling about uh, our this. Uh, when you are taken this uh, identity of this body and uh, and in this uh, body, when we are in the waking state, we are in ignorance of our own self. That is what his calling has. We are in deep sleep because we are not uh, recognized our own self or we are not uh, gone back to our, we are not in the Sakshi Bhava, Sakshi level, but we have identified with our body. So that is why in this, uh, when is, we are in this body, in this waking state, we are still in a dream state because we have we are still in ignorance. That's what he is talking about, as far as I understand it. So, Dr. Vipin, are you happy so, with the answer or you want to pass on the question to somebody else? I would like to pass on the question to somebody else, Guruji. Who, who else would like to answer this question? Yes, Lalita. Go ahead. As for my 
understanding i feel uh, bipin ji is talking about the gnani okay in the awakening in in the jagran state when he's talking about the deep sleep that he is aware of everything but at the same time he is untouched with uh, so he is in the deep sleep is what i as per my understanding i don't know but uh, okay I, are you happy with answer dr bipin somewhat okay somewhat anybody else wants to answer challenge <laughs> so guys uh, no i somebody... i, I okay. think uh, i don't know if he meant awakening state is that uh, when is when we are awake uh, when are associated with the ego i don't know if it's that's what he meant because that was one state you mentioned and the other one is swapna avastha so uh, the state we are awake that's also considered a um, dream state no so when you associated associated with the ego and the various uh, thing is that what uh, he meant i am not very sure wonderful so anybody else wants to answer the question hema or pubalan prabhu ji uh, prabhu ji deep sleep state is uh, only atma exists right uh, okay ji, that is what my understanding okay. in awakening state our uh, mind body intellect everything will relax that is what my understanding very good wonderful pubalan uh guruji it all depends also on what reference point we are having if it's a agyani point of view so it is in the jagrat shushupti mm -hmm. and if it is a non agyani agyani then that state doesn't arise that we are doing things as per the body mind and intellect okay so when you say we are <laughs> awake so who is sleeping <laughs> and for agyani he is in the ishwara brahman state atman state only wonderful Yes, Gayatri, do you want to answer? Gayatri? Okay. So, Dr. Vipin, uh, you want to give the answer? Guruji, I would like to listen it from you. <laughs> See, in a movie, when you go to movie hall, there is a screen and the movie which is going, goes on all the time. screen is there okay gayatri is not able to speak because uh, some uh, she is outside okay a screen is there and movie is there together is there screen and movie are together we can't say where is the screen where is the movie both are there together right okay. so the waking state and dream state is like a movie gets projected on the screen but screen is there all the time in the waking state dream state and deep sleep state all the time it's there so what is there in the all the three times state is called brahman okay in the waking state dream state deep, but he is not bothered is not even aware of the movie brahman yes so that's why brahman is in deep sleep all the time so that means all of you all of us are in deep sleep as brahman correct okay yes. but as the movie character we feel that we are thinking talking and sleeping uh, speaking the movie character is doing all the drama yes, so yes. the movie is the maya now the problem with the movie character movie character doesn't know there is a screen movie character doesn't know screen the, that means all of us we say i am speaking i am talking without knowing that i am just a shadow yes okay yes, that's yes. in maya so real real i does not speak does not know anything the movie character which is not real keeps thinking that i am real <laughs> yes so yes. that's what mamata ji told earlier from yes. adnani's point from from a nani's point of view adnani is in deep sleep in the waking state means adnani is ignorant of his true nature yes but nani's point yes. of view he himself is in deep sleep because he is brahman and adnani is a uh, appearance yes guruji yes, so guru. the deep sleep is told it's very subtle the deep sleep is told as adnana sleep of adnana in vedanta adnana is called deep sleep so one way of explaining deep sleep is uh, like mamta ji said the waking state person does not know reality that's why he is in deep sleep spiritual spiritual sleep correct Okay, that means the movie character does not know. Movie character is in spiritual sleep. It's called abnana. That's one way of understanding. But another way of understanding is 
so nani knows i am in deep sleep yes okay the deep sleep is i am fully awakened i don't have to know anything so hmm. that's where it is called na, the, uh, the deep sleep has a double meaning it's called adnana for adnani adnani's point uh, from adnani's point of view it's adnana for the movie character and for adnani's yes, point yes. of view sleep itself is myself because of the non duality so hmm. this comes in the bhagavad gita ya nisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagrit sanyami that shloka comes shloka tells about this please uh, this all of you please understand this very carefully this is a very important point that vipin has raised what is sleep and what is awake state you have to be very careful so awake state means actually is like a sleep yes and uh, okay you have to realize all of you lalita gaumati mamata prabhu gayatri hema all of you as brahman you are sleepy <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Okay, as Brahman, you are sleeping. The screen is already there. The screen is sleeping, but as Jiva, as a movie character, you are thinking that I am talking, I am interacting. Is that clear to you? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Vipin. Anybody else has any yes, question? Yes, yes. But actually, actually speaking, there are, we are thinking like that. The movie that character is, is thinking that you are talking. in reality you are not you you are just a movie character okay <laughs> movie character is not reality <laughs> and real you is the screen which is always sleeping so, so it depends on uh, which angle you are looking at it from right he, which angle you are looking from it depends yeah. here in this class we are looking at always trying to understand from nani's point of view and all of you are nani's only from this class <laughs> in this class what is the no point in discussing your nani's point of view <laughs> right and really all of you are sleeping now because as brahman you are sleeping and as movie character you have become gomati lalita dr ripin so now what movie character is just a shadow and light and shadow dance music <laughs> no no reality so dr vipin is uh, giving his dialogue that gomati is giving his dialogue uh, her dialogue and lalita is giving her dialogue mamata prabhu is giving her dialogue movie characters give the dialogue but they are not real <laughs> yes so what is the importance of this uh, dr vipin is that yes. people think that realization means something has happened realization is understanding what is happening <laughs> then you will not seek one day i'll get realized i am right now i'm sleeping i'm the screen <laughs> yes. okay next question to uh, you are asking question to gaumati no um i have to ask the question no no uh, dr vipin has a third question dr vipin yeah guruji is also third question mamata id sorry mamata prabhu okay yes yeah. being atma should be natural to you in all your actions mm -hmm. this is what guruji has advised us many a time so my question is how can we be atma which should be natural to us all the time i would like to have some clarification and uh, examples practically on that so mamata prabhu the question is for you no no unmute unmute first unmute you have to unmute you know i'm audible yes yeah when uh, guruji says one has to be very natural to has an atma and all he is just telling drop all this notions that i am the body mind and intellect and just be relax yourself don't get uh, don't identify with any of these things just play your role as such like now i am a mother 
then i just play the role of mother but do not get so very attached that anything happens to my child it should be, it should it shouldn't be like i get hurt if the child gets hurt i get hurt or if i am uh, playing the role of a sister or something if anything happens to my other siblings i shouldn't take it personally that i should i should do the required actions at that particular time and take the right decisions that which can be happen only when i am as a sakshi and just uh, understand that i am just playing a role only then things will happen as a very flow, uh, very beautiful way that is what he is telling that uh, just be an atma and uh, just relax that's what i understand it okay Wonderful, Doctor Vipin. You want mm -hmm. to ask the question? Yes. Yes, yeah, yes, Guruji. The answer is clear. Yeah. So, anybody else wants to answer this question? Reminds me of the shloka from second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yes, ah. sarvatra na bisne haha tatat prapya shubha shubham. Very good. Na bilan advesh tasya pragnya pratishtita. Hmm. Like it says, whatever may come, just uh, don't stick to it. Okay. Anabisne haha. Like just be friendly with anything, anywhere, anybody, but don't stick to it. Don't like if somebody is crying, don't involve into it and then just say that it has happened to me also. You know, Very things happen. It is a it is a play, and we are all players. And it is going to happen. Just observe and do whatever, do your duty as a part of a player, and just be untouched. Wonderful. So and pragna uh, pratishtita, like know that you are what you are. That I, the realization, the real I is you. So you have that uh, on your head all the time. Okay, very good, wonderful. That we've been. Are you happy? <laughs> oh, very happy. Very happy, Guruji. Yeah. So basically, a actor coming on the stage, like Mamta ji told. He knows he's the actor. He'll dance, sing, but very, very well he'll do. <laughs> Similarly, yes. know that you are Atma. Play all the roles very well, but don't get affected by the role. So know that I am the Atma all the time is being natural. Okay. Very good. So now uh, let us take up who is next. Hubalan. Yes, good. Yeah. I have to ask. Yeah, uh, let us uh, let us let uh, Hema already ask questions. Uh, not it, Prabhuji. Uh, Hema, you can ask shoot questions with Pubalan. He is in Singapore. You have to shoot fast. Shoot uh, a long drive, <laughs> long range. <laughs> Hema, go ahead, please. Uh, Prabhuji has quoted the free. You, are, you can switch on your video, please, if it's possible. Yes. Uh, Prabhuji, Prabhuji has quoted uh, three identities. Uh, I wanted to know explanation on this. So, uh, Pubal is asking, uh, she is asking about three identities. Okay, the three identities we are uh, Guruji refers to the body, mind, and intellect. That's it. Happy body, mind, and intellect, he says. The identities. Yes, Professor. Okay, next question. How do you recognize yourself uh, in these three identities? Okay. So, Pubalan, how do you yes, recognize yes. yourself in three identities? <laughs> so, it all depends on the role that I play. So, so if I'm playing the role of an engineer, I'm an engineer. If I'm the role of a husband, I'll play the role of a husband. If I'm, the, I'm playing the role of a, as a son, I'll play the role. So, it all, so at a bodily level. So this is not my real 
I because this is all, all I so how I recognize myself is not by um, negating. I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. I'm not the intellect. I am a pure awareness. Okay. So if it refers, if if anything that I objectify, so it's always becoming to the false side. So this is how I identify myself to be Atma <laughs> and Atma Vivek. <laughs> Wonderful. Are you happy, Hema? I want to listen. <laughs> you want to? Anybody? I oh, want to yeah. listen with others. Okay. Anybody wants to? Anybody else wants to try this answer? Uh, the question is not clear, Guruji. Question is, first question is she asked, uh, what are the three identities, right? Body, mind, and intellect. Correct, now? Yeah, yeah. Next question is, how do you recognize yourself as Atma in these three identities? That is the next question. Very, very smart question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hema, you are caught. Caught all of us. Okay. <laughs> so, Gayatri, can you answer the question? How do you identify Atma in all these three identities? In these three identities. Ah. <laughs> okay, you always give that uh, uh, hand example, uh, you know, uh, because of the, uh, uh, I mean, they act as a mirror where uh, the self is, uh, they become the mirror through which I'm uh, experiencing the self. So that is one way where I will uh, recognize the self through these three instruments, which become a mirror for the self. Wonderful. Emma. And uh, the other way is uh, the sadhana, the uh, the understanding uh, done by the, because without body, mind and intellect, you cannot recognize the self. So these three instruments help you uh, through sadhana, through uh, jnana yoga, karma yoga, kriya yoga, bhakti yoga. These three instruments only work in all these yogas. And finally, uh, Using these three instruments, you will recognize the self. I mean, you will use these instruments to drop the instruments to recognize the self. Wonderful. Hema, yes, you want to yes, ask the yes. question to somebody else also? <laughs> no, Prabhuji. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to try? Vipin or Komari, Komari, raise your hand. Do you want to try, Komari? Yes. So you have to watch carefully. Somebody wants to raise the hand. Komari is eager. Okay, go ahead. Prabhuji, <laughs> uh, you've always taken that example to dissociate from what's changing and what's not changing. Wonderful. So body, mind and intellect keep changing. The body keeps changing through aging. Uh, the mind today will say yes, tomorrow will say no. Uh, so what is actually not changing is our true identity. So we have to be able to dissociate from that point of view also. What's changing, what's not changing. Wonderful. Vipin, you want to say something? No, Guruji, this very fine explanation given right now. Very good. So basically, whenever we speak something, I I went home, I walked. The walk part is body, but I has not changed. The body has changed, but I have not changed. It's called Nitya Anitya. Body is Anitya. Body is changing. Okay. So then uh, I was happy, I am unhappy. The mind is changing, happy and unhappy. But I has not changed. Right? I know. I know physics. I don't know physics. The knowledge has changed. That's intellect. But I has not changed. This is called Nitya Anitya Viveka. You have to apply what is changing, what is not changing. Hema, are you happy? Yes, Prabhuji. So uh, just now, some, some time back, you are not happy. Now you are happy. So <laughs> that what is that? I am happy. I am not happy. Is the mind, but I is not changing. <laughs> yes. So that's real you. Uh, Guruji. Uh, so if we uh, say like, uh, I mean, the question is like, uh, how do you recognize Atma in in the body, in the mind, in the intellect? Then how do you how will you answer that? It's uh, yeah. So the question here, she asked Hema, what are the three identities? Body, mind, intellect is identity. I am the body, I am the mind, I am the intellect is identity. Correct? No? In yes. that, how do you recognize the self is 
when you say I am the body, the body is changing, but I is not changing. So Nitya Aditya Viveka, I have to apply to recognize who is I. In the all three states also. Mm -hmm. In the all the three states also. Veki, in the no, in this Viveka, you are discarding the body, mind, intellect. But what he asked is not to discard that. See Atma in that. Is that the question, Hema? Uh, no, Prabhuji. Whatever you have said, that is what I thought. <laughs> okay. So, Hema is saying, Hema is, Hema's question is about related to Nitya Nitya Viveka Gayatri. Okay. Do you have a, a different viewpoint? Okay, because the question meant like, uh, uh, because the question meant like, uh, uh, I think the exact words she said is in the body, mind, intellect. Hence, uh, okay. uh, using the body, mind, intellect, yes, there is a changing and unchanging. But how do you really uh, recognize okay. Atma in the body, mind, intellect is something okay. uh, so, uh, which will give a different meaning to the question. Oh, wonderful. So, Gayatri, um, Hema, Gayatri is looking at the question in some different way. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, Mamata Prabhu, do you want to give any answer? Uh, you have to unmute. Okay, do you want to give this answer? Did you understand uh, Hema's point of view and Gayatri's point of view? Yeah, uh, Hema is telling uh, about how to relate Atma with the body, mind and intellect. But whereas uh, Gayatri is telling how to recognize this particular Atma in body, mind, intellect without separating and Okay. So, is that uh, under, uh, understanding of the question correct, Gayatri? Uh, yeah, because it's a, then, it, then it will become a totally different. In Vivekas, what you are doing is you are discriminating. I mean, like uh, sorting out, you are separating them. But uh, the question was not that. The question was like, how do you see Atma in the body, mind, and intellect? Hence, uh, the answer has to change. You cannot give Nitya Nitya here. Okay. So, Hema, whom do you give, want to give Mark? <laughs> Who passed the examination? <laughs> I don't want to judge. <laughs> no, 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 Guruji, it's not about Hema's point. If no, if no. we take the second viewpoint, what will your answer be? Is what I, no, no. I actually there are three viewpoints, not two viewpoints. <laughs> One is with the discrimination, you understand who am I? Body is changing, mind is changing, integration. There's a separation, logical separation. Correct. Second, second aspect is in the body, in the, body. in the mind, in the intellect, how do I recognize? That's Gayatri's viewpoint. So the body is the object. The object always points to subject, real I. The mind is an object which always points to subject, real I. And intellect is an object which always points to real I. So it's like a mirror. So that way, at any point of time, you go back to yourself. In the body, in the mind, in the intellect. Is my answer? Is my understanding of uh, your answer correct? Uh, is is it correct, Gayatri? Uh, yes, Guruji. Because every object is a pointer to the Atman. That's where I brought the mirror. So, exactly. so Hema, the answer given by Gayatri is: You have a mirror. The world is a mirror for Atma. The world is there. That's why you are there. The body is there. That's why you are there. Mind is there. That's why you are there. Intellect is there. You are there. So, always use the objects of the world as self. I'll give a third viewpoint. This is the second viewpoint. Third viewpoint. Okay. Prabhuji, uh, we are uh, mirror is a distinction to the Atma. Sorry? Ma, we are mirror. Everything in the world is a mirror to Atma. Oh. Right? See, the body is there because Atma is there. The reflection is there because the original is there. Movie is there because screen is there. So it's like ways of expressing, no? Ways for Atma to express. It's a way for Atma to express. The, from the expression, you have to understand Atma is there. That's what Gayatri is telling. Yeah, like from source, everything is coming out. Source, everything is coming out. Like a painting is there. Picture is there. Oh, from the picture, you know, oh, artist is there. Like that. 
a beautiful painting is there. Using the painting, you have to know, or artist is a very good artist is there. Right? So like that, Atma is there in every object based on every other. And third viewpoint is there, third way. This is the third view. Two views are expressed. So in any action, Karma Yoga, okay, any action, when you do action, do action without a doership. There's no doer. So in the presence of Atma, action is happening. In the thinking, there's no thinker. In the presence of Atma, thinking is happening. In the presence of Atma, knowing is happening. Knowledge is there, but knowing is happening. The knowing is there all the time. The knowing is Atma. So the knowing is always there. In any action of the body or mind or intellect, only action is there. There's no doer. There's no one is there. Knowing is there. That knowing is Atma. Okay. Okay. So who, who is uh, who, who was asking the question now? Hema was asking the question, right? So Hema, yes, who, 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 who are you asking? Bhuvalan, ask the next question. Yes, sir. Uh, Prabhuji has quoted one uh, animal example, how it changes. Uh, can you please elaborate on this? Uh, no, no, I don't elaborate. Bhuvalan has to elaborate. Uh, <laughs> not, not <laughs> ask the question. <laughs> ask the question to Pupalan. What is the question? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, uh, in the video, uh, uh, Prabhuji has quoted the one animal example, how it changes. Uh, the chameleon. Uh, chameleon. 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 How it changes. Can you please elaborate on this? Yes, Oh, yes. It's a question. So, so, uh, this teaching is that, uh, uh, that uh, Kamalyon is that we, uh, we identify ourselves, like we already said, I think, we just want that. We identified ourselves with what uh, we are. are so, I said that uh, I can relate myself to my, my wife as a husband, to my mother as a son, and to my work as an engineer. So this is uh, how it changes differently in in the, in the Via Maharika, in the worldly uh, aspect. Is that is that question? Is that right? Or... <laughs> Emma, are you happy with Kubal's answer? You, that answers your question. Any other views? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else wants to answer the question? Yes, sir. Omar, 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 yeah. As usual, see, uh, for uh, your information, yes, Omari and uh, Pobalan are husband and wife. So wife always has an objection to husband. <laughs> yes, Komari. <laughs> so the, the example referred to the always the chameleon is changing color. It doesn't have a true color of its own. It's adapting to its environment. And uh, therefore, Prabhuji takes that example to say how... Um, we play different roles, but we never forget our true nature. When uh, when you come in front of the husband, the environment is changed. Husband is the environment. I become the wife. Okay. The chameleon changes the environment. With the environment, with the stone near the stone, chameleon becomes stone. It looks like stone. With the greenery, it becomes green. In the front of the husband, you become the wife. In the front of the mother, you know, with daughter, you become the wife, uh, mother. Like that, you change your. <laughs> color <laughs> identity. <laughs> yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Thank you. So you, you have completed three questions. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Now, Pubalan, your turn to ask the question. Whom, do you, whom will you ask? Who is? Uh, uh, yeah. Komari, Puma. Let's see the <laughs> between husband and wife. Pubalan, you can ask the question to Komari, <laughs> or Komari will ask the question to Pubalan. Which way? Which way? <laughs> So for every question of Pugal, you can ask a counter question also. <laughs> okay. Prabhuji, I'll ask a question if that's okay. Okay. Ask. Okay. So Pubalan, why are we doing this class today? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the class that um, the Vedanta study circle, Guruji has put this up so that we can, uh, whatever we have learned, Shavana and listening to Guruji's talk. And in this class, we'll be doing Manana. So by 
discussing group discussion, uh, we get more clarity on all the we have listened for so many hours, for so many years with Gurujis, and now putting in practice how, how we remember it, doing banana. That's what Gurujis, Shavana Manana. And then the last will be Nibhyasa. This we'll do on our own. But basically, it's Manana class. Are you happy? I will invite others to add. Oh, to others, this. others have to answer. <laughs> uh, anybody else wants to try? Dr. Vipin? No, no. Okay. Anybody else who wants to try? Lalita? Well, actually, this session helps to clarify the doubts, I think. If you have any, if you are not very sure, like for me also, it helped. Like, I had, uh, I wasn't uh, proper with certain answers, mm -hmm. but now. It, this class has helped me to clarify this from various angles, well, yeah, various perspectives. And all. Very good. Lalita, you want to answer? Yes, it's like uh, the, end, the end of questions. Like <laughs> later you <laughs> have no questions because every have an answer for everything. Whatever rises, you have an answer. So then you will have, then you are prepared for Nididhyasan. Very yes. good. Mamata Prabhu, you want to answer? Mamata? Uh, yeah, basically, like uh, I said in the beginning of the class, though we listen and we presume that we have understood everything, but when we try to explain what we have understood, we can see certain gaps in our understanding or when we share our understanding with others, and they point out certain things, we will be able to uh, see the gaps and uh, understand it and uh, rectify our uh, understandings if it is wrong. Wonderful. So that is, uh, uh, for me, I think that is the reason why we are in this class today. Wonderful. Gayatri, you want to say something? Uh, Guruji, you have given this uh, coffee example where uh, somebody puts sugar into the coffee and then he drinks, but it's still bitter. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, uh, so what was missing is stirring up the sugar. <laughs> so that stirring didn't. So when you shravana is happening, the input, uh, the inputs are going inside, uh, but the stirring, I mean, like uh, uh, clarification, contemplation. Then, did I interpret whatever has been, uh, you know, sent in? Uh, intellect whatever i'm listening yama is my mind with all its vasanas is it uh, interpreting it in the right way uh, all these things come out in a uh, manana session so that's what i feel that manana sessions are very important wonderful are you happy komari prabhuji uh, there may be a question no no, no i'll give the answer no i haven't got one part i thought was Nididhyasa is also happening at this moment, like right. the two wings of the bird. Right. So, could you elaborate on that one, so, please? First, first question I'll answer. Okay. <laughs> so, the question is, in a Vedanta, okay, in a traditional Vedanta, Guru will be there and Shisha will be there. There will be dialogue. Guru will tell something, Shisha will ask question. Then Guru will ask a question, it's a dialogue which has to happen. Okay. But nowadays, Vedanta has become a broadcast. Guru will sit and broadcast to all the people. So now, that's where Manana is missing. Manana means, what is listened, have I digested it? So that is missing compared to a traditional Gurukula, where Guru and Shisha were dialogue is going on. Only dialogue can bring the reality. Because if I ask a question, you will give an answer. Then I will know you are not understood or not. Then I will give the answer to the next question. Like that, always in Vedanta, there should be dialogue. It should not be monologue. It should not be broadcast. Now, in the modern day, the entire Vedanta teaching in many ashrams, it has become broadcast. Guru will tell something, you listen and go. And you think you have understood. In Vedanta, there is a very important role for a Puru Pakshi. Puru Pakshi is somebody who will question you, who will challenge you. Right? So... All, today, I am so good. I am good in communication. Thanks to my Puro Bakshi. My Puro Bakshi is called my Gayatri Ji. So, she questions everything what I say. She challenges me. She doesn't allow me at all. Then I have a Puro Bakshi at home also. My wife. 
so these people <laughs> will challenge me <laughs> so then what will happen my understanding becomes better there will be no gap and your understanding when you try to explain somebody the gaps will go okay so that's one way this is called manana then another thing which you have to understand is as individual my questions are only one person's question but here simultaneously six people are thinking like i am six heads i have six heads six heads i am doubts are rising six heads concerns are coming so it's like my my power of uh, questioning and my power of understanding is multiplied by six fold it's called group learning so the manana is a group learning session so this manana session was there in the earlier gurukula system but now it has gone now i'm bringing about manana manana system in this vedanta study circle instead of one person thinking six people are thinking six people are asking question six people are answering your power of understanding becomes multiplied and your power of expression if somebody challenges your answering ability your gaps will come out right so i always ask people to ask me question because if you ask me question and i i give, I give the answer then you will be happy okay guruji knows something if i don't give the answer guruji will know that he doesn't know something <laughs> right so basically it's a way of challenging yourself understanding so that whole understanding goes deeper as gaidi give you example if i put a sugar in the cup of coffee sugar is in the coffee right if you listen to vedanta all of you i'm sure all of you have gone to vedanta classes you listen but sugar has to be digested stirring has to happen so the stirring part is manana class and as mamata ji said when i'm trying to express my gaps will come out i know what i don't know <laughs> so this is the gnana yoga this is a proper gnana yoga shravana is happening happened with the video guruji manana is happening in the group this is next step so now uh, our uh, lady uh, kaumari has a next question nididhyasa is also happening so uh, pubalan you have a question how nididhyasa is happening now <laughs> You're unmute. You're unmute. Unmute first. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many days is happening? Because when we are uh, doing the manana, the mind settles to its own, so that uh, we become uh, more clear. Our intellect become more clearer, and then uh, this is a state where we can become so deep inside. So I think this nididhi uh, asana happens automatically at the same time. Wonderful. So. as usual she is not happy with your answer <laughs> okay <laughs> now anybody else can answer this question who wants to answer the question <laughs> so gayatri you want to try no i mean her question was nididhya so is also happening now is that yeah. what you saying correct 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 yeah in this process of q and a if any uh, belief system or concept in my subconscious mind gets replaced with the right understanding the first thing uh, the wrong concept has been removed and uh, uh, second thing is uh, uh, through in this q a in, in this process of q a the application of uh, shravana is shravana and manana is also happening simultaneously so basically nididhyasa is application of what i have learned and also nididhyasa is reprogramming the subconscious mind very good so, yeah so lalita you want to try uh nididhyasana yes because uh shravana it's happening at the same time the manana is also happening where we are uh, trying to understand what exactly we have heard and at the same time also we are uh, uh, we are uh, in the self okay. like uh, we know that everything happening is just uh, a, a play so we know we understand that so we? that's where <laughs> the i the okay. i so it, all the three is happening at the moment that's Very why they good. say shravana matrena mukti hi is uh, like uh, it because all three happen simultaneously mm. uh, when one is hearing wonderful yes so, so mamata prabhu you want to try out
I think everyone have covered it. I have nothing left much to for me. Okay. Gautam, Gautamati, you want to try something? Uh, uh, Shavana, Manana, you know, uh, that's listening and uh, contemplating. Is uh, Nidityasanam putting it into practice? Okay. So, I just uh, wanted to know. Yeah, you have a question. I'll answer that. So, yeah. Dr. Epin, you want to answer? Uh, Shravana is listening as uh, we, we have been given to understand. Manana is trying to find out where the pros and cons and Nididhyasana is as uh, someone said uh, application or trying to contemplate in, in, in a way that uh, you are in a state of you are in a state of meditation and you are trying to understand the nitty gritties and all that you have listened to and contemplated all the all the thing all the churning goes on and eventually you reach a state of uh, state of equanimity uh, probably that is what I am able to understand, Guruji. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Hema, you want to say something? Uh, no, Prabhuji. <laughs> okay. See, when we speak of uh, uh, Vedanta process, Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasa. Right? There are three aspects of Vedanta process. Now, immediately our mind is very good in cutting into three pieces. I'll do Shravana now. I'll go back and do Manana. Then I'll do Nididhyasa. So we'll make it into three stages. Right? So in Vedantic teaching, Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasa simultaneously happens when you listen to Guru. Okay. Okay? Hmm. It is not three steps. Our mind is good in cutting into one into three. It's like our mind wants to cut, cut, cut and see what is the reality. When you listen to the Guruji, it's called Shravana. Okay. Then Manana is also happening. Doubts are coming. So Guruji is clarifying the doubts also. Nididhyasa is accepted. Nididhyasa means, Nidhi means wealth. Who is the wealth? Brahman is the wealth. Vyasa means, I am Brahman. So that understanding becomes deeper and deeper in your subconscious mind. So in any of the Vedantic questioning, the Vedanta process is Shavana Matrena Mukti. When you listen to the Guru very carefully, the truth goes deep inside. Okay? The Mukti is Shavana only. Now, in Shravana, you did Shravana, doubts got clarified, and you got convinced I am Brahman. Then you go out. Some doubts will come. Okay? So now, you share the doubt in the Satsang group. Then what will happen? The multiple doubts will come. And you are addressing the problem in many angles. So that way, you are cleaning up. It's like a thorough vacuum cleaning. All your doubts, in, we are doing many ways. But when you are vacuum cleaning, also the is happening because it's going deeper in you. Deeper you are becoming more and more clearer. I'm Brahman. Okay, then you go home and you sit silently. You close your eyes. Okay, I am Brahman. Immediately thought will come. Oh, am I Brahman? Doubts will come. So then you have to address the doubt. Right? So, that I'll chant a sloka. Please repeat. Satsangatve, Nisangatvam, Nisangatve, Nirmohatvam, Nirmohatve, Nishchalatatvam, Nishchalatatve, Jivan Mukti. So, Satsanga is three dimensions of Satsanga. First dimension of Satsanga is to be in company of Guru. Guru is the Sat. Okay. So, listening to the Guruji very carefully can give Mukti. If you are, it goes deep inside you. Right? Shravana Matrena Mukti. In the presence of Guru, if you very, very carefully, fully attention, you listen, then it goes deep inside. Right? Can truth go deep inside so, so easily? It can. Okay. For example, somebody, some of your friend tells you, right? You are an idiot. 
How many times you have to tell he is an idiot? <laughs> he has to tell only once. You will remember it for 20 years. <laughs> the idiot goes very easily deep inside. <laughs> right? Even in a dream, he'll come, friend will come and say, you are an idiot. You get angry. So once once some, somebody tells you truth, they, or whatever is there, it will go deep inside. So in presence of Guruji's teaching, the truth will go deep inside. Then Shavana Mana and Nidhyasa has happened simultaneously. Right? Understand? Now, when Shravana happens, listening happens, that's called Satsanga first level, which is Sadguru. But the, you have to have, you have to listen without judging. We don't listen actually. Always our mind is full of judgment. Always we mind interpret. Right? So this Guruji is saying like that. My previous Guruji said something else. Okay? Oh, this book says something else. So a lot of uh, vasana and samskara will come. Clouding. When we listen, we should listen so attentively that that goes deep inside. We don't do that. What happens when you are listening, we are, don't listen actually. Already we are judging. Right? So, that without judgment, listen intently. Okay? Look at Guruji. Look at your eye. When it should be eye contact. Listen carefully so that it goes deep inside. Then, for a very evolved sadhaka, that is more than sufficient. Nothing else is required. Shavana Matra and Mukti. Okay? But what happens is other people, Vasanas will come, hidden Vasanas will come. They'll have to go back, then they'll have to discuss in a group. Manana will happen, Nidhyasa. Manana and Nidhyasa is supportive of Shavana. Once Manana happens, Shavana becomes much more sharper, much more cleaner. So Shavana, Manana is supportive, Nidhyasa is supportive. Again, you come back to Shavana, a deep, clean input will come to the head, uh, mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, first level Satsanga is with Sadhguru. Second level satsanga is satsanga with a group. Now what will happen is your questions are multiplied. Your answers are so multiplied. Now we will say I went to a satsanga. Okay. That satsanga is different from this satsanga. Why is it different? Because in that satsanga I generally some talk, gyan is given. In this satsanga all of you are referring to one video, one topic. You are very focused. You are not getting into something else. This satsanga has a focus and commonality. That's why this satsanga is sharper. It's not like, oh, I went to satsanga, very nice satsanga. This is not very, it's not about nice here. It's about removing all of your doubts. It has to be very focused. That's why it's called, this is called satsanga. First level satsanga is with Sadhguru. Second level satsanga is with the group. And third level satsanga is with yourself, your own inner self. Your, your, your inner self is Atma, Sat. Now any doubt will come. You have to remove the doubt based on the Sadhguru and satsanga. Does it answer your question, uh, Komari? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Now, last question. Um, so, what should we understand from the um, statement that Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya Okay. <laughs> yes, Vapuvaram. So, yes, you're right so, with you or real? <laughs> no, so this, Guruji, this question is the ultimate declaration for Jivan Mukta. Huh? <laughs> the ultimate declaration, absolute, oh, okay. the highest declaration. Okay. So, Brahma Satya is that Bra Brahma is the, the real, which doesn't change, which is the, uh, the absolute, uh, never changing. Uh, Jagat Mithya is what is what is appearing and disappearing, which is not real. And Brahmeva Navara is that the Jivatma is not separate from the from Brahman. Okay. Jiva and Jivatma and Brahman are one. Hmm. This is what is the I understand from that. It's the same like Guruji always take the that the example of goal and necklace, where goal is a necklace, but necklace is not the goal. So also Guruji used to take the example of water and wave. So same thing. So Brahma is the is the is the absolute Satchitananda. Okay. So if we understand this statement, uh, we have uh, attained the. <laughs> we, we, we have attained Guruji. <laughs> so, your wife is real or Mithya? <laughs> <laughs> so if, it is, if it is real, it should uh, come in my dream also in all the three states. <laughs> 
Okay. So it keeps appearing and disappearing. When I go to sleep, it disappears. It's not there. <laughs> she disappears and you are not seeing, watching her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else wants to answer this question? Lalita? Jagat Satya. Brahma Satya. Jagat Mitya. Hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Brahma Satya, Jagat Mitya. Yeah. Yes. Other than Brahman, everything else is Mithya. It is just an illusion. It is like a. Uh, uh, it, it is. It is just an illusion which we just feel because of the uh, because of the mind, the ignorant. Uh, Wonderful. I don't know, Guruji. I'm not able to put it in the right words. I don't know. No problem. Okay. So, Mamata Prabhu, you want to answer? Uh, Brahma, Brahma Satya Jagan Mitya is like uh, the same thing like uh, we are telling the self, the variable which doesn't change at all is called as uh, satya and the one which keeps on changing is an which is an illusion is uh, the other thing mithya very, very good hema you want to say something mm, that is uh, brahma satya is the unvariable one and the uh, unvariable change and jagan mithya is uh, variable variable one which will be changing okay so why is mithya if it's changing Illusion. <laughs> oh, it's illusion. What is illusion? Your <laughs> husband is illusion. Your children are illusion. Are you illusion? <laughs> yes. Huh? Are you real? <laughs> no. <laughs> then we're real. <laughs> okay. So, Dr. Vibin, you want to say something? Guruji, I, I remember having heard somewhere that Guru sought water from the disciple okay. and the disciple went to get water mm -hmm. and before that the disciple had asked the Guru mm. what is Maya? Okay. So the disciple went to get water he went to a house he saw a beautiful lady there Yeah. he fell in love with her yeah. And gradually started talking and in the process they both yeah. got so involved <laughs> that eventually they got married. Yeah. And after some time the father-in-law died and all the property was inherited by the disciple and then he had three children and one day a storm came, flood came and uh, the, the disciple, the wife and the three children were there in that flood and it was a violent storm and suddenly one son, he got carried away with the storm and the second child which was carried with uh, carried by his wife, he also went off and in the meantime, the disciple was looking after his wife and after some time, the wife was also not there and this disciple was totally exhausted and when he reached the banks of the river, totally unconscious, suddenly... Mm. The voice came, have you brought water? <laughs> and then the disciple opened his eyes. He said, Guruji, 12 years have passed. His guru told, half an hour has passed and you didn't get the water. He says, half hour, Guruji, these are 12 years of my life have passed. <laughs> yeah. Guruji said, this is Maya. This is Mithya. So is Maya and Mithya same? Uh, Guruji, I, in my humble opinion, Maya and Mithya both are illusion. Mithya is something to, which is not Tathya, which is not truth, which is not reality. So uh, as far as I understand, Maya and Mithya are the same. Okay. Anybody has a different opinion about this Maya and Mithya being different?
So, uh, who asked the question? Komari, right? Yes, Prabhuji. So, do you agree with the Dr. Vipin? Maya and Mithya are same? Yes, Prabhuji. Gayatri, do you say Maya and Mithya are same? No, I think Mithya is a subset of Maya. Okay. So the say... story he has given is about uh, Vishnu and Narada, and uh, which explains the uh, the illusion of time space. Uh, you know, in in Maya, I mean, how one can be influenced by Maya. Mm -hmm. um, but whereas, uh, I think for Mithya, the examples would be different. No, no. Are they same or different? Can you give explain why why they are different? Mithya is about uh, uh, the names and forms, the appearance, whereas Maya is about, um, I don't know exactly. Uh, Maya, no, but I but I know that Mithya and Maya are uh, different aspects. Mithya is a byproduct of Maya, okay. is what I feel. So, Gomati, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh... I know. I feel Maya. Maya is like uh, uh, images, like pictures and all, and Mithya is more like words or something like that. Okay. Wonderful. Is I feel. Or... I think there is a difference. I don't know what it is, but there's something like that. I feel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Lalita, you want to say something? Uh, yes, Guruji. I think uh, Maya and Mithya are the same because, as we say, uh, Brahm. Satya. If Brahma alone is Satya, then mm -hmm. everything is Mithya when they say, then Maya also comes under Mithya only. So there shouldn't be any second thing which is uh, different because only Brahma is Satya, then every second thing is Mithya is what I feel. So her question was about uh, Jagat Mithya. So uh, 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 Dr. Vipin, Guruji, no, no, here uh, Jagat is Mithya as names and forms, but Jagat is also Satya as Brahman, the essence. Correct. Correct. That's right. So, Mamata Prabhu, you want to say something? Maya uh, and Mithya are same or different? I feel it's uh, different. Like Gayatri, you said, uh, it's the subset. I feel Maya is the power of the consciousness, one of the power of consciousness. And uh, Mithya is an illusion or a appearance. Or it's just an appearance which is actually not there. Okay. That is what we call Mithya, what we call it as Mithya. Wonderful. So, basically, Maya is the power of projection of Brahman. So, Brahman projects Maya, which is actually time, space, cause, and effect okay so the mithya is these appearances are not independent they are dependent on brahman understand is mithya relationship of that to brahman is called mithya like necklace is appearance necklace is related to gold gold necklace cannot exist without gold so that understanding is called Mithyatva. Necklace is Satya as gold, Mithya as necklace. So the Mithya is given for us to understand the nature of Maya, whereas Maya is the projection. Mithya is the teaching to come out of Maya. Is the distinction clear, uh, Dr. Vipin? Yes, Guruji, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand. Yeah, Maya is appearance to understand okay. nature of maya the mithya is given as a teaching to come out of maya so okay. maya is the trap mithya is the solution <laughs> okay right so maya is the puzzle mithya is the clue to the puzzle Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, yes, Guruji. Yes. Uh, is Gayatri, am I clear? Uh, it's, it's 
still not sinking guruji maybe i have to contemplate more because uh, if there is brahman and uh, how from where does this maya come from it is an energy of the brahman it is a power of yes. brahman energy power. Of so the energy of, like it is like so if there is a rope and we are mistaken it to be a snake the snake is mithya the rope is the maya no no a rope is there and you take it as a snake correct mm -hmm. so now and you are afraid the guru comes and tells gives a clue to for you to come out of the illusion the clue is mithyatva it's a method of teaching for you to come out of maya okay. right it's a process of waking you up from maya you are afraid of the snake so snake appeared because of maya rope is real brahman but now i have to wake up lalita there's no snake i have to give the teaching the mithya is the teaching given for you to wake up a step by step teaching so guruji in this example of snake and rope hmm. uh, the rope is appearing as a snake because of maya and i take the rope as snake i mean for my perception my perception of uh, looking that as snake is is uh, because of mithya can i say that no no so rope is taken as snake you are afraid Ma you have got trapped into maya in this example maya is clear what is mithya in this so example i tell you okay so you are afraid that is a snake yeah now guru comes and tells now guru has to give the teaching hmm to bring you out of maya so guru will tell my dear gayatri there is no snake snake is mithya appearance rope is satya the teaching is given to come out of maya then he will give me next logic right first i will tell gayatri oh gayatri don't be afraid the rope is satya it is there is a rope there not snake brahman is there i am pointing out brahman there the snake is appearance mithya i am telling you so mithyatva is a teaching given to tell you the reality is brahman but when you are in maya you are trapped in maya the maya is a power you are trapped mithyatva is a teaching given to come out of maya the like true and false no ah uh, true and false in maya you don't know what is true you don't know maya you don't even know brahman you are already trapped like in this example he gets married and he forgets guru but that is called prakriya no guru ji how can you call that as mithyatva no mithyatva is a prakriya is the the entire snake rope example is a, a prakriya yeah everything is a prakriya no brahman yeah is... so what is the difference between the mithyatva you are talking now and uh, and a prakriya mithyatva is a prakriya no yeah it is brahma satya jagan mithya is a prakriya of teaching no ah uh, the vedantic definition of mithya we have those four typical definitions like uh, appears disappears and then uh, changing and then uh, a dependent reality and experientially real these are the definitions given for uh, mithya yeah, mithya is a teaching brahma satya jagan mithya is a teaching the teaching prakriya involves what is the mithya definition understand this so then you understand mithyatva is given to you to come out of maya okay the definitions of mithya i am using it and i am trying to break the maya or the mithya right correct so the question was whether maya and mithya are same hmm. maya is the trap maya is the prison mithya is the key to come out of the prison oh you will crack maya using the uh, using the understanding of mithya or using the definition of mithya correct so you are using key to open the door of maya <laughs> so maya and mithya are same not same are you clear dr opin yes yes guruji see guruji. this guy is married and has a children okay yes. so he is in maya he doesn't know mithya then guru comes in some way guru comes as a beggar tells him hey your wife is unreal okay you are in dream so that's mithyatva 
<laughs> he is helping to come out of my, my dream. Okay. The mithya is the yes, key. Sir. The maya is the prison. He is not. He is showing the mithyatva. I think that's a better way to say that. He is showing the mithyatva, and once uh, Guru is showing the mithyatva to the Agnani, then he uses. Uh, I mean, he'll understand the mithyatva, uses that as the key, and comes out of uh, Correct. Maya. Correct. So basically, Maya is the problem. Mithya is the key to the solution. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So it's yes, like you said, just like you said, uh, uh, the purpose of Maya is to understand Brahman. The purpose of false is to understand what is the truth. Real. Yeah, but when you are in Maya, you are trapped. You are in prison, right? Somebody has to come and give a key to you to come out of prison. That key is given as Brahma Satya Jagannitya. Is Mamata, you wanted to say something? So what is the difference between Mithya and Mithyatva? Is there any difference in no, Mithya no, and Mithyatva? Mithya and Mithyatva, there is no difference. We are discussing Mithya and Maya, difference. Mithyatva means, so, uh, it's like, uh, Mithya means, uh, Mithyatva means, uh, the essence of Mithya, right? Uh, uh, mithya means unreal. Essence of unreality, we are trying to understand. I mean, when you understand the definition of Mithya, uh, definition of Mithya, we understand the essence of Mithyatva. Means what is Mithya is just word. So Gayatri says unchanging, dependent reality. That is a Mithyatva essence. Means understanding Mithya in clarity. Okay. Right? Is the Maya and Mithya difference clear? Yeah. Hema? So Guruji, you see, uh, as long as there is Brahman and Maya, it is Maya. duality. Uh, See, Brahman and Maya, there is no Brahman and Maya. duality? No, no. When you are trapped yes. in Maya, there is no Brahman. Oh. Right? There is no question okay. of duality. Duality is there. Both should be there. If you are in Maya, where is Brahman? Brahman is not there. If you are in Brahman, Maya oh, is not in Maya, there. No Brahman. Okay, okay. Right? Oh, only when Mithya comes into picture, only then there is a duality. No. in no. There is no duality. No. There's no duality. There comes the Advaita. There comes Advaita. the Advaita. You are only cracking Maya. You are breaking Maya using Mithyatva. Right? Yes, Hema and Gaumadi, you want to say something? Uh, no, no, nothing to say. Okay. So... Hema, yes. what, is the, uh, no, what is the word with P something you said when she mentioned? Is it the same as Mithitva? Um, uh, can you again ask the question? What is the question? No, some uh, other word I forgot. Uh, she was discussing with you. Uh, Ga Gayatri was discussing with you regarding the Mithya and some other word which is the same. Is it the same word here? What is the word Gayatri used? P with P. Gayatri, did you use any other word? Prakriya, Prakriya. Prakriya. Uh, so Prakriya is a teaching method, right? So the other day, you attended my class, right? I asked you, did you sleep? Are you awake? Who slept? Like a systematically giving a teaching is called Prakriya. So Prakriya is like a surgery. When you go to doctor, he'll cut open and do surgery. Correct? So Prakriya is like a surgery. Okay, I did the surgery of Avastha Traya Prakriya for you the other day. So, Mithyatva is also a surgery. The Guru will tell about Mithya and they try to understand Mithya. How to understand Mithya? That becomes a Prakriya. Teaching method. Just Mithya world doesn't solve your problem. What is Mithya? Why Jagat is Mithya? You have to get into that. So, then it becomes a Prakriya. Prakriya is systematic teaching. Are you clear? So, Hema, you wanted to say something? Or we can go ahead? Uh, no, Prabhuji. Nothing. Okay, Gayatri, yes. You want to say something? Uh, no. Okay, so now that leaves us with the... Uh, shall we close that? Close for the day? It's already getting time. Uh -huh. 
so yes, i made it uh, for a uh, uh, gaumati right i made you raise your hand who who raised your hand okay who raised your hand the other day you did a prakriya called who raised the hand right you are there gaumati yeah no the other day i asked you to raise your right hand and ask the question who raised your hand right yeah so the who the who raised the hand is a prakriya so that's the way i am trying to break your ignorance illusion right whatever technique guru uses to break the illusion is called prakriya jagat mithya is a prakriya I mean as your guru applies it prakriya it go deeper and deeper it will break your head <laughs> illusion <laughs> like practical example no something like that like something, something not practical example it's your own life example so your own life example is used to break your own ignorance right so kumari are you happy who was who was the question with uh, yeah kumari put the bouncer to <laughs> pubalan <laughs> yes yes prabhu ji you Kumar, also you have no chance of success in life <laughs> everywhere your bouncer will get from wife <laughs> prabhu ji the, the second part which is um, jivo brahma eva naparaha i thought of it from the point of view of existence so the first one also brahma satya jagat mitya from existence point of view uh, jagat is always changing so but from existence point of view it doesn't change therefore brahma satya jivo brahma eva naparaha because from i am perspective consciousness and existence i am also part of brahma so is that correct the second I'm part from apart of brahma brahman has no parts i am brahman <laughs> brahman has no parts if the parts if there are parts parts of brahman brahman is miserable right so you have right, parts your teeth has a tooth has a part so you have to take you have to go and replace the part brahman has no replacement no replacement <laughs> yes yes <laughs> okay. so okay. the jiva is not separate from brahman yes so thank you prabhu everybody got a opportunity to speak ask questions anybody wants to ask questions or uh, uh, speak hema gomati gomati i think went off nice hema, hema you want to go got a opportunity to ask questions yeah i finished prabhu ji ha huh? activist my turn yeah are oh, you finished already so gayatri you want to ask questions okay so we'll come to the conclusion okay today uh, sir i have a doubt yeah. uh, i always want to know what the difference between vedas and upanishad sir okay so anybody wants to answer this question whether what is the difference between vedas and upanishads lalita you want to try vedas the in vedanta is upanishad Vedas include Karma Kanda and Gnana Kanda also. The Gnana Kanda part is Upanishad. Okay, very good. Uh, anybody else wants to try? Ripin? No, Guruji. No. Uh, Kaumari? Yes. uh pubal you want to try uh the guruji the vedas are the, basically four vedas and the upanishad are those who has been written by enlightened masters based on the four vedas okay so gayatri so i think uh, everything is apaurushaya including upanishads and uh, upanishads is like a conversation between the enlightened rishis and uh, either kings or disciples mm -hmm. uh, upanishads are also considered to be apaurushaya because they are coming through enlightened beings mm -hmm. and uh, vedas uh, form the it's the first part is karma kanda the second is upasan kanda and the third is the gnana kanda mm -hmm. so the gnana kanda is the upanishads part so i think uh, typically a jiva starts from karma kanda and finally lands up with upanishads upanishads uh, uh, is completely about atma gnana 
in simple i think this is what i can tell yes mamata probably want to answer yeah they initially brahma created this four vedas but uh, later on he found that uh, people were finding it difficult to understand the four vedas uh, is whatever knowledge he had and uh, yeah, so to sabai brother baba nadi call yes sir mahati baba sir call what is happening yeah you can move uh, yeah go ahead baba yeah uh, so upanishads are, some, are the cream of the vedas so that people can understand it in a more simplified way so that is why we have this various types of ved uh, upanishads given to us by various rishis and uh, and even if we don't understand upanishad then we have this bhagavad gita which was given to us by the lord krishna in a more simplified way so that we are, even a simple uh, layman can understand it so these are the simple way in which it was uh, created <clears throat> and that is what my understanding is wonderful so gomati uh, anybody else wants to try otherwise i can give you answer see there are two types of knowledge okay one knowledge which is there in the universe all the time right it is you can think that it is the memory of ishwara bhagwan's memory like your memory bhagwan has a memory the cosmic memory like for example you have a memory individual your house your husband or your uh, job all this you have a memory the cosmic memory what is there in the cosmic memory universe is called veda so the cosmic memory contains all types of information how to create the universe how to destroy the universe how human being should live okay what should be like everything about creation like everything it's like a knowledge of entire creation is there in cosmic memory right because once universe is created then it will be destroyed again created again destroyed the knowledge or the software which is required is called veda it's always there is veda is called nitya brahman brahman or nobody writes it is already there right so it includes many knowledge of science many knowledge of technology today what we call as algebra or uh, astrology astronomy many of them are a part of veda it's there in the brahman's knowledge okay so knowledge of creation knowledge required for sustenance knowledge required for destruction shashti sthiti samvara whatever knowledge is required is there is ishwara bhagwan that knowledge is called veda is that clear to all yes so now it is called apaurusheya apaurusheya means no purusha no individual has created it. created the human mind has not created it is there already in the universe nobody has to create the vedas what is there only somebody can go and see it a rushis saw the vedas and wrote it down the rushis are called mantra drashtaras that means they didn't see they didn't create vedas vedas are apaurusheya means it's already there in the universe okay even brahma ji doesn't create that is there in brahma ji's memory or rather uh, brahma vishnu maheshwara memory ishwara's memory they don't create it it's vedas are nitya and they don't human beings don't create it no individual does it it's a porushya but what is there is there in the form of sound subtle sound vibration very subtle vibration in the deepest silence deepest meditation you can get that veda that's why it's called shruti then rushis record it they listen and record that's why they are called mantra rashtras shruti is called heard a vibration they are tuned to it and get it like radio radio waves are there all the time so you have to tune to station so like that rushi is tuned to it now the part of creation sustenance destruction is not relevant to us as a human being because the brahma ji's job right what is our job how do i live in this creation so that i become peaceful my job is how do i make live my life like for example if you look at uh, 
uh, uh, various mantras, Veda mantras, like Nasadiya Sukta, Sashti ke pehle kuch nahi ta, there was nothing. The process of creation is already told. Like uh, your, your uh, very many Veda mantras are telling about creation, how creation happens. It's all part of the Brahmaji's memory. Rag, uh, the, what you call as uh, 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 the mantra, no? This mantra. Uh, what mantra? Rudram. Rudram tells various aspects of creation. Okay. So now, our problem for human beings, how do I live peacefully in this creation? So that's why Vedas come out with Karma Kanda. Karma Kanda means you do this, 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 this ritual. Means you do this practice, you do this yadna, this will benefit, you'll get. So it's about Karma Kanda, it's about doing something. So morning you get up and do Sandhya Vandana or you do uh, this marriage ritual, like that all those prescriptions of human life, so that human life can become a disciplined life. So that's called Karma Kanda. So Karma Kanda has a larger part of the Vedas, more than 95% because most of the people only that much. How do I, what do I do? How should I do marriage? How should I have children? Or how should I get uh, uh, success in life? So Karma Kanda prescribes all these things. Or how do I do puja? Karma Kanda is about doing. Okay. So then some people want to go beyond doing. They want to meditate and find God, realize God. So that portion is smaller. Karma Kanda portion is more than 95% of Vedas. Then comes Upasana Kanda. Upasana Kanda is how do I meditate and find God? Okay. So using the same Veda Mantra, you meditate on Veda Mantra to find God. Or, or actually, actually imagine God, visualize God. Upasana is about visualization. So then finally comes to Jnana Kanda, which is less than 1% of Vedas. So Jnana Kanda is like last chapter of Vedas. Like if a book is there, last chapter is there, right? The last chapter is the summary. Summary of how to realize that you are God. You are trying to search God, but you are God. You are Brahman. So that teaching is given as Jnana. So Jnana Kanda is for Mukti, liberation, to realize you are Brahman, you are God. Upasana, Upasana, uh, Karma Kanda is to bring discipline in your life. Otherwise, you are indiscipline, our mind will be heavier. Upasana Kanda is about, imagine about God. God is like this, God is like that. You know, visualize. Jnana Kanda is to realize you are God. So Vedanta is also called Upanishad. Upa means up. Nishad means takes. Something which uplifts you is called Upanishad. What uplifts you? You are Brahman uplifts you, liberates you. So that is called Upanishad. So all this is called, what we call as, this all whole thing is called Apaurushaya. Nobody wrote it. Nobody created it. It is there in Brahmaji's memory. Rushis accessed the Brahmaji's memory and gave it to the world. And all of the scriptures in the world, please understand, most of the scriptures in the world are made by human beings. Human mind has corrupted. They have own, their own vasanas and sanskaras have come into scriptures. In Upanishad, Vedas, there is no vasanas can come. Human mind vasanas can come. They are pure. So when people don't understand Vedas, Sri Krishna, Upanishad, meaning of Upanishad, Sri Krishna comes and tells Bhagavad Gita, summary of Upanishad in a very simple way. So time to time, Many Mahatmas, Sadgurus, Rushis come and try to tell what is there in Upanishad in a clearer way, simpler way, common man, approach to common man, right? When it's told by a human being, the teaching is given or by a person, there is called Smriti. Shruti means direct access. Smriti means understanding. Bhagavad Gita is not Smriti. Bhagavad Gita is not Shruti. So oh. similarly, right now, what I am giving to you is Smriti, not Shruti. Does it answer your question? Yes, yeah, so uh, like Upanishad mean, uh, you mean that uh, Karma Kanda is one Upa, uh, Upa, uh, Upa, Upa uh, that is uh, Upanishad, uh, that no, small. Karma Kanda is very big. Ah, okay. Upasana Kanda. Upasana ah, Kanda Upa meditation. Oh, meditation. Okay, not meditation of uh, Nididhyasa. Nididhyasa is Nana meditation. Upa I know. Visualization. So God is like this, God is here, like that visualization. In Nana Kanda, which is very small, it consists of 108 Upanishads. So that small portion will tell you logically 
and clearly you are brahman you are god so upanishad is only that small 1% you say less than 1% right vedas are infinite actually okay lot of portion of veda is not available to human beings but that portion some ragveda rajveda samavida atharva veda is four vedas it is a small aspect of whole vedas oh and upanishads are many lot of upanishads are lost also what is available to you is today 108 upanishads so the upanishad again is through upanishad. some human being no upanishad no. is through smriti no, no. no upanishad is shruti Uh, told in the form of dialogue between the student and master. It is not even Smriti. Upanishad is a part of Vedas, last chapter of Vedas. Guru Guruji, uh, I wanted to know what is the difference with, uh, between Smriti and uh, see a Veda mantra like Om Bhur Bhur Swaha Tat Savitu Varyanya Bhargo Deva Siddhi Mahi Deva Yo Na Marcho Daya. There is some Veda mantra. nobody created it vishwamitra rishi saw that tuned to the universe and got it right but when he has to explain to you you can't understand mantra it becomes prati the original is shruti explanation meaning given to it is called prati are you clear yes sir so shall we close for the day yes okay uh, is this format okay for all of you do you find it beneficial or do any, any first question so is this format of discussion manana is good for you yes sir yes sir yes 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 guruji yeah mahati yes, mamata prabhu vipin yes guruji very much okay very very beneficial okay now here here you see we take only small portion is mamata you want to say something uh, yeah um this uh, timing i think i have to change otherwise it okay. clashes with my gym this thing okay ha uh, class to what so it is the coordinator who has to control the timing very properly okay today i came and uh, whole thing i disturb 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 the timings <laughs> right yes you can you said okay yes yeah great yeah see here what we are doing we are not taking very, very big topic we are taking only small two videos in the small two videos this many questions are coming okay like that vedanta we are taking piece by piece small portion cut it and this whatever started uh, the self knowledge talk right is the first basic level of teaching for me it's like a beginner small small videos now as you progress it will become more and more complex deeper questions will come okay so anybody has any uh, suggestions mamata ji has a suggestion that timing has to be controlled properly so that is the is that uh, suggestion mamata ji yeah that is uh, one thing i want to yeah so time so, is in each so person uh, asks uh, two questions minimum not even three and uh, the answers uh, i mean till the right answer comes out so there are like uh, one two three four five six seven seven people today mamta hegded income eight yeah. people so eight into two is like uh, 16 questions uh, even people. if we bring uh, it to one question also guruji one, then one question is one question is more than sufficient i think okay one question eight questions and uh, uh, the focus is on uh, coming up uh, you know uh, we'll discuss on the answer and finally the right answer comes out yeah so in that process i think one hour is not sufficient maybe we'll start early like 330 maybe 330 to 5 i think one and a half hour yeah. is a decent time for people to actually by the time people log in and everything gets settled we lose 10 minutes there only yeah yeah so uh, please uh, try to control in a right way learn from basic uh, learn from uh, learn from each each session and try to improve take a feedback and improve okay yeah so today actually uh, because of presence of guruji it got uh, extended guruji speaks a lot of time he doesn't know how to close his mouth <laughs> okay right so uh, we'll close with a prayer uh, mamata ji can you do prayer 
அசோமா சமய தமசோமா ஜோதிர்கமய மிருத்தியோர்மா அமிர்தம் கமய ஓாந்தி ூர்ணமதூர்ணமுதச்சேஷாந்தோனாபுது ஸ்மிருதி <laughs> okay so nanu nane bodala is original it came from the universe it may be in kannada but it is a shruti okay i cannot translate to any language also no but uh, when they get shruti so the uh, the uh, gurus and all get it in which some language or is it like a, no, no. Gurus, that vibration is the gurus get is a vibration finally they will express in language of their that language if it is kannada kannada okay. if it is sanskrit sanskrit the me the essence is coming at vibration finally you have to express in the language which you know but that vibration and the language will match so this nanu nanembudu nanla is shruti that's why it will be a little difficult for you to remember but remember it it's a shruti okay then next shloka mamata ji om loka ஆத்மதர்ஷனம் லோக கை ஹோல்ட் யுவர் ஹேண்ட் லைக் இன் பிளெஸிங் போஸ்டர் லோகாஹ சமஸ்தாஹ சுகினோ பவந்து லோகாஹ சமஸ்தாஹ சுகினோ பவந்து லோகாஹ சமஸ்தாஹ சுகினோ பவந்து ஹரி ஹி ஓம் ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நம ஹரி ஹி ஓம் ஓகே சோ வெரி ஹாப்பி Uh, Guruji, uh, Gayati is saying other IVS sessions are only doing uh, Asatama Sardhimaya. Actually, I insist on doing the complete prayer. Okay, because the complete prayer is the summary of the entire teaching. It may take you two minutes, but you do it. Okay, don't, stop, don't, do a small, don't cut short the prayers because prayer is what I want to, to get into your head. The prayer is not just prayer. It is actually deep. It should go deep inside you. so you can inform this to other other groups also guys again guruji if you can give a document i think i'll share it in the avsc call i have I, i already given a document initially when i started avsc i have given a document uh, i think then as a reminder we have to send i have never uh, never left anything in the document i have given a clear procedure right if it is missing in the document tell me but even if, if a few years back i have, i have, would have written properly in case it's not been written i'll give it to you okay okay so, but prayer never miss the prayer beginning prayer and end prayer don't cut short the prayer yeah okay because prayer contains the essence of if you have to low only know something the prayer will contain everything right summary okay uh, it's very 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 wonderful all of you sorry we exceeded the time next time the time will be controlled very tightly okay uh but do this make it a way of life atma vichara questioning make it a way of life it goes deeper and deeper into you that's called manana so i am trying to bring back the vedic time practice of manana properly where discussion used to happen now 
in the modern day it's lost the manana is lost so the manana practice i'm trying to bring in this way in the small small groups and the groups are kept small six people because the manana can discussion can happen if the group is big, big the manana cannot happen and the topics which will be discussed here will be based only on the video talks or uh, anything which comes to my mind no the topics you should focus on video talk that video talk videos which are discussed and that's why the 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 focus will be there others will get diverted diverted no now in today's uh, uh, session this uh, brahma satya jagan mitya all those things that didn't come in the talks and all. right so yeah so some of the questions and all were not uh, related to this and it has been uh, looked like it came randomly like that yeah, yeah. so i want to know whether i can just uh, based on your whatever talks or whatever is uh, comes to my mind can i ask like that and uh, get clarified or uh, it yeah. should be based on the talk uh, try to focus on the video focus on the questions based on the talks don't go out of syllabus okay so those those questions i answered today because i am present otherwise they should try to focus on video and get into depth of each this will come brahma satya jagan vitya all will come but each small topic you digest fully so uh, so so should, we should be ready with the question and uh, questions uh, i mean each yeah. one of us yes uh, yes we okay. should be able to shoot the questions <laughs> so you will send the video based on that the questions will be yeah, or yeah. how video and question should be based on that the question should be based question should be said that it is try to explore the ignorance understanding should be deepened the question so next is, class one question no guru ji from next class one question one which question per person okay. okay right ask one question deep question so that the person try to bring out the best in that person guru ji if person a comes up with a question and person b also has the same question then so then uh, that question I mean, B has to reframe the question. First come first. Okay. <laughs> right. If a person if, can have some three, four questions with them, yeah, but, in case yeah. the same question gets repeated by another person, they can use the other questions to uh, how, uh, shoot really the questions. Four questions. In case the question somebody has asked the question, you can change the question. So the questioning is an art of Vedanta. The questioning is as important as. answering right shall we close for the day so who is the coordinator next time the coordination gayatri will announce the next coordinator who wants to be a volunteer next coordinator anybody wants to raise their hand yes uh, kumar you want to speak some say something uh, kumar will become the coordinator next time yes prabhu ji so kumar opening prayer closing prayer strict time control right okay and passing on the question and do not criticize anybody all questions all answers are right appreciate the answer uh, the coordinator also has to make a table of uh, the uh, puropakshi and the siddhanti like uh, who yeah. has to ask question to whom yeah. uh, she has to form a table so Up, uh, uh, you have to give a table who asked the question to whom right who is the purupakshi who is siddhanti and change the pair yeah. purupakshi not come you have to tell in advance you have to tell in advance huh sorry because the chart has to be made on based on that one what you have to tell sorry no she has to post the table in advance in the group she has to post yeah, yeah. the table like who is the purupakshi because people have to come prepared with question but i think everybody is a puro pakshi here no guru ji everybody will become puro pakshi everybody will become siddhanti ha ah, it's not like the jj sessions okay yeah yeah okay i have to go for next class okay hari om hari hari om thank you hari om